Hello everyone, my name is Stathis Maneas and today I'll present the large-scale field study that we conducted at the University of Toronto in collaboration with NetApp on the operational characteristics of SSDs in enterprise storage systems. Over the past decade, solid-state drives or simply SSDs have been a, a popular choice for uh, storage systems, uh, increasingly replacing hard disks. However, their performance and lifespan uh, is, are affected by operational characteristics in ways that are fundamentally different than those for hard disks. In our study, uh, our goal is to understand what uh, the operational characteristics of SSDs in real-world production systems. Specifically, we look at write rates and how close drives are to wearing out, as SSDs can reliably endure only a finite number of PE cycles. Also, we look at the drive's read-write ratios as uh, SSD performance is affected by the mixture of reads and writes due to the big difference in latencies associated with read and write operations. Also, we focus on background operations and specifically, we look at, the, at what uh, write amplific amplification factors look like and how different factors affect them along with the effectiveness of um, the drive's wear leveling mechanisms. Throughout our study, we distinguish between two different types of usage, one where SSDs are being used as a write-back cache, and another one where SSDs are being used for persistent storage. Finally, we look at how full production systems are, and also how fullness evolves over time. Fullness can affect the performance of an SSD significantly, as it impacts the frequency of garbage collection uh, operations, and also uh, impacts the efficiency of other operations such as wear leveling. Due to the interest of time, I'll be presenting only some of our uh, results and observations. So I'd like to refer you to our paper for uh, all our results and uh, the entire analysis. Uh, we have a very rich data set that spans almost 2 million SSDs uh, deployed within NetApp's enterprise storage systems. The data set comprises uh, different manufacturers, interfaces, and drive models. Uh, also, there is a wide, range, a wide range of age and usage values, along with different system configurations. So, is it a concern that SSDs have limited lifespan? For our first example result, we look at what rate do today's drives use their P cycles, and also what does that mean for future flash generations with limited P cycle limits. To this end, we make use of a metric called NAND usage rate, which is defined as the percentage of a drive's P cycle limit that has been used, normalized by the total time in production. The P cycle limit is, space, is specified by the manufacturer and denotes the point after which SSDs become unstable. In other words, this particular metric denotes uh, what percent of the drive's P cycle limit uh, is consumed on average per year. In this figure, we show the cumulative distribution function, or CDF, of the drive's non-usage rates. When we look at the single line uh, representing all the SSDs in our data set, we find that, interestingly, most SSDs consume their PE cycles at a very slow rate. In fact, the majority of SSDs consume less than 1% of their PE cycle limit per year, suggesting that they uh, can remain in production for 100 years without wearing out, assuming that this rate um, remains constant over, uh, over uh, the, you know, the next 100 years. Also, when we look at the other, um, uh, at the other lines uh, corresponding to different drive models, we find that the uh, NAND usage rates vary significantly across the different models. Interestingly, in our data set, there are three models, namely 1C, D, and E, whose NAND usage rates are significantly higher compared to the other drive models. When we look at their write rates, we find that they are not much higher compared to the other drive models, suggesting that there are um, other factors which drive NAND, NAND usage rates up for these particular drive models. Uh, moving on, um, NAND usage rates uh, allow us to make projections for future QLC, uh, for future uh, flash technologies such as QLC. 
With, with QLC drives, the main concern is that their P cycle limits drop. So here we are interested in finding out how many SSDs in our data set uh, and how many systems can actually transition to QLC. In our analysis, we, we assume that the P cycle limit is either set to 1,000 or 3,000, and also that SSDs remain in production for five or seven years before wearing out. Assuming a five-year warranty period, we find that 86% of the SSDs in our data set would not wear out uh, prematurely even if we set their P-cycle limit to 1,000. This percentage increases to 95% if we extend the P-cycle limit to 3,000. Interestingly, when we, uh, we observe that the percentages do not change when we extend the uh, warranty period to seven years, suggesting that most systems in our data set can actually transition to QLC. So, non-user rates are calculated based on the total amount of writes that have taken place within a device, including background writes. So next, we are interested in calculating how much background work is performed by the SSDs in our study. Internally, SSDs perform different operations such as garbage collection or uh, wear leveling in order to, to operate efficiently. However, this process increases, uh, generates uh, additional writes, resulting in write amplification, impacting both the endurance and performance of an SSD. Existing field studies report a modest write amplification of 1.3 to 1.5. However, these uh, studies focus, uh, they have a limited um, scope as they focus on uh, either uh, one specific application type or a single flash technology. Also, um, related work uh, includes uh, trace-driven simulation studies, which report write amplification up to seven. However, these studies uh, are based on traces that have been generated on hard disks. Naturally, we ask the question, how effective are SSDs in production systems and what are the write uh, amplification uh, factors look like? Here, we show the CDF of the drive's uh, write amplification factors. Um, and as we observe, there is a, you know, a write amplification very significantly across drive models and also drive manufacturers, uh, with the median value of the population um, being equal to 7.5. Similar to NAND user traits, the same three drive, drive models have the highest uh, write amplification in our data set. As I, as I mentioned before, uh, write rates alone cannot justify uh, the high write amplification we observe for these particular models. When we examine them more closely, we find that they, these models uh, perform background work every time they have idle uh, cycles to spare. However, this background work is not related to garbage collection or uh, wear leveling as commonly assumed, but instead uh, the high write amplification that we see for these drive models is the result of aggressive rewriting of blocks to deal with retention uh, problems. When we compare our results against uh, existing field studies, we find that write amplification is much higher for the SSDs in our data set, highlighting the need to uh, conduct and publish different studies spanning uh, a large number of systems and also different applications and devices. Compared to trace-driven um, simulations, uh, we once again find that the write amplification uh, factors are much higher in our data set, suggesting that A, it is challenging for more modern, um, it is challenging to simulate the complexities of modern FTLs, and B, it is very important for us as a, as a research community to bring SSD-based traces into public domain. In our study, we study, uh, in our work, we study several different factors and their impact on write amplification. Our results suggest that uh, the uh, FTL and, the, and uh, the, character, the workload characteristics can have a huge impact on write amplification. Surprisingly, though, we find that fullness and over-provisioning have little impact on, on write amplification in practice, contradicting common expectations. 
We explore several other factors and their impact on write amplification. So uh, for the, due to the interest of time, I'd like to refer you to our paper for more information about our analysis. Moving on, uh, we next explore the read-write ratios of the uh, uh, SSDs uh, in our data set, exactly because S uh, reads compete internally with writes, affecting SSD performance. So in our study, we look at the read-write ra read -write ratios associated with SSDs in enterprise storage systems, and uh, actually our results can be used to uh, assist existing simulations and experimental test beds, which commonly uh, accept the read-write ratio as one of their input parameters. In this figure, we show the uh, CDF of the drive's read-write ratio, and as we observe, most SSDs in our data set experience read dominant workloads. In particular, the median SSD sees four times more reads than writes, an observation that is in stark contrast to storage base, uh, to hard disk uh, based storage systems, which generally see more writes than reads. Considering that a prior work uh, involves studies on uh, SSDs in data centers, we next compare the read-write ratios in our data set in enterprise storage systems against data center uh, drives. Here in this figure, we compare the uh, drives in NetApp's enterprise storage systems against drives in data centers. The two axes uh, denote the, uh, the uh, devices uh, average read and write load per day, and as we observe, workload characteristics vary significantly among those systems. In particular, the read and write uh, rates for NetApp enterprise storage systems can be up to two orders of magnitude higher than those for uh, SSDs in data centers. When it comes to read-write ratios, the dashed line in this figure represents the case where uh, the amount of reads is equal to the amount of writes. As we observe, uh, NetApp uh, SSDs are clearly on, on top of this line as they experience uh, mostly read dominant workloads, similar to what Microsoft SSDs experience. Uh, however, we observe that um, when it comes to Facebook and Alibaba drives, we find that their read-write ratios are actually, the, the amount of reads and writes that they experience is actually comparable, uh, once again highlighting the differences between you know, uh, data, uh, SSDs in data center and SSDs in enterprise storage systems. In conclusion, um, in this study, uh, we present the operational characteristics of SSDs in, uh, in real-world production systems. Some of, uh, of our results and observations are surprising, as for example, we find that SSDs consume their P cycles at a very slow rate. On the other hand, we interestingly observe that write amplification factors uh, can actually be much larger than what has been previously reported, and also that there is a wide range of uh, write amplification across different models and manufacturers. Also, we study the impact of several factors on write amplification, and uh, here I would like to stress, uh, uh, to stress the need for us as a research community to collect and make uh, SSD-based traces publicly available for future research. Uh, finally, we have many more results and observations in our study, so uh, and once again, I'd like to refer you to our paper. Thank you so much for your time, and I would be more than happy to take any questions that you might have. And if we run out of time, and uh, if you are interested in this work, the poster session is coming up next, so uh, please feel free to come and find me. Thank you.